When I'm giving feedback on a student essay, one of the early comments I often write on a script is to ask that the question is reproduced before the answer is given. In fact, I'd go as far to say that this is one of the most frequent feedback comments that I give to students. In this video, we'll explore why reproducing the question is important in essay writing, the boundaries of that question, or just how much information to reproduce, and some of the benefits of reproducing the question. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Emily, a university teacher in the arts and humanities, but also someone who frequently studies as a student myself. And on this channel, we explore all things study related. So why reproduce the question? After all, when you have a long essay to type, those extra few sentences may feel like you're just adding to the burden. Or if you're working to a deadline, typing out the question can take some of that precious time you need to complete your essay. Well, there are a few reasons, but I'd go as far to claim that typing the question at the top of your answer may actually improve the essay itself. Because in over 20 years of marking essays, where the question is missing or elements of the question are not reproduced, it's common that essays miss out those elements and therefore don't answer the question. Here's a couple of examples. A word count is specified in the question, but this element is not reproduced. Commonly in this scenario, the essay is under length and therefore doesn't include all of the required information for a full answer or lacks the depth of analysis needed for an excellent answer. Another scenario might be that reference to a source named in the question is omitted. In this scenario, commonly the essay includes only very limited reference to the source or doesn't mention it at all. Because this source is named in the question, it's likely to be an integral part of the assessment task. The second reason for reproducing the question is that it sets a good impression. Imagine yourself as a marker who has hundreds of scripts to mark in a short space of time and think about how you want your marker to feel. Do you want them to feel like reading your essay will be a pleasure and something that they can do with ease? Or a script which will be confusing and where they'll have to do a lot of thinking themselves to understand what's written and how it's relevant to answering the question. This first impression can have a long shadow. So where a script is not presented well, it casts doubt in the mind of the marker, leaving them wondering if the essay contains other issues which need untangling. As a student, I'd want my marker to approach my script with positivity rather than instantly spotting a problem. Reproducing the question also demonstrates your understanding of good academic practice. Now, you might be watching this video and thinking, I'm not really sure about academic convention and academic practice, as this is the first university essay I've written. Don't worry, I have another video you can watch, which will have your essay presentation looking like a pro. I've linked it here in the cards and on the end screen too. The third reason for reproducing the question has to do with clarifying basic information such as which assessment task you are addressing. I remember undertaking some exam marking where students were asked to answer one of three questions in an essay. Where scripts did not reproduce the question, this created a guessing game for the marker as to which question was being answered. Surely that's easy, you may say. Well, some students decided to hedge their bets and write an answer which appeared to encompass all three questions, presumably thinking that they've got to get something right and this would guarantee a pass. Whilst this was a fun puzzle to figure out as the marker, as a student, I definitely wouldn't want my grade to rest on how good my marker is at solving puzzles. Now, it's all well and good to say reproduce the question, but sometimes it's less than clear what the question consists of. 
Here I would suggest seeking advice from your institution, but for my own students, I'd offer two pieces of advice regarding the boundaries of the question. And this may be relevant across the university sector. The first relates to the sentence with the word count. A common question format my students will see looks like this. To what extent did Beethoven reuse the musical ideas of other composers? Discuss in no more than 1500 words in the form of an essay. I've already mentioned how important it is to reproduce this second sentence, which appears on a separate line, because commonly where this is not reproduced, it results in underlength essays. The second scenario is where the question makes reference to a source. Consider the following extract from the Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians. To what extent did Beethoven reuse the musical ideas of other composers? Discuss in no more than 1500 words in the form of an essay. A common scenario here is that the first sentence is omitted and as already mentioned in this scenario it's vital that the given extract forms a substantial part of the argument of the essay. Even though the first and third sentences appear to be instructional rather than forming the academic content, it's vital to reproduce both and to address these instructional elements of the question in the essay answer. Commonly, addressing only the second sentence is an easier assessment task, but it doesn't address the nuance of the question set. You may ask if it is necessary to reproduce sources which form part of the question, such as an extract of text or an image. Again, check with your own institution, but the advice I would give to my own students is that it's not necessary to reproduce this information. Sometimes it's a disadvantage where students do reproduce this information, and this is to do with the clarity of writing. Where the source is not reproduced, the writing in an essay has to be precise and clear and to make sense to the reader in the absence of the source. Where the source is reproduced in the essay, commonly the student will shift the responsibility of close looking or close reading of the source to the reader and therefore the writing and the argument in the answer to the question is less clear. Finally, you might ask what are the benefits of reproducing the question? Well, first of all, the act of typing out the essay question helps the student to process the question's meaning and some of the nuance of the question. You may spot something which wasn't apparent when just reading the question. A second benefit is that having the question visible at the top of the page as you type the essay answer means that you can refer back to the question regularly to clarify that you're on the right track. It's very easy to answer a different question, one which you've made up yourself because you preferred the task or had a particular interest in an academic topic. I know this because I've done this myself in the past. And finally, as mentioned, reproducing the question leads to a good first impression with your marker and shows that you are familiar with academic practice. In other words, that you're a pro. If you need any help with your essay presentation, check out this short video to sharpen your skills. Thanks for watching.